Here's another example of a BIOS and a CMOS. As this one boots, it has information about who made the BIOS. In this case, we have an award BIOS. Information on our processor, our memory, our DRAM clock. And then down here, we press delete to enter setup. So the CMOS setup utility is similar to the other ones you've seen. I'm not going to go through all the settings. A couple things I want to show you. We're going to set a supervisor password. So this allows us to make changes to our setup. And then we can set a user password. So this one will allow us to look but not touch any of the settings. So this will allow you to lock it out, allow the supervisor to come in and make setting changes, and maybe a user to come in and look but don't touch. I'm going to set a password for both the user and the supervisor and then we're going to pretend as though we can't remember those passwords. So then I'll open up the machine and show you how to reset the password by using the CMOS jumper or by removing the CMOS battery. So in this case I'm going to set a supervisor password. I'll confirm that password. I'll also set a user password. We can use these passwords to either allow us to boot the machine or we can use them to allow us to access the CMOS. So that option is down here under the CMOS security option. It says select whether the password is required every time the system boots or only when we enter setup. So in this case we're just going to use it for our setup. We're not going to require it for booting the computer. So I'll press F10 to save these changes and select yes and then restart our machine. On restart I'll press the delete key to go into the CMOS setup. And then it prompts us for a password. So in this case if I enter the user password some of these items are locked out so they turn blue so I can't make those setting changes. I can go in and I can look but I can't make any changes to any of these features. They're all blue, they're all locked out. So I can just look around but I can't touch anything. So I'll press F10, exit and restart. Upon restart I'll press the delete key again to go into the CMOS setup utility. And from here I'll enter the supervisor password and then these stay yellow so it allows me to make changes to these and then I can swap out and change any of the settings for any of the uh, CMOS information. So I didn't make any changes here so I'm just going to quit without saving. Let's say we have a computer that has a BIOS and CMOS password both a supervisor and user or one or the other. If we forget that password we need to be able to somehow get into this machine. So if I enter the password incorrectly and it won't allow me in and there's no way that I can get into the, the CMOS, if I have physical access I generally reset or remove the password. This not only resets the password but if you remove let's say the battery or reset the CMOS completely that will reset all of the settings so we'd have to start from scratch. So that's what I'll show you now. I'll power down the machine, remove the case cover, and then show you both setting the CMOS reset jumper and then we'll also remove the battery. The legend indicates that jumper 16 if you have the jumper over shunts number 1 and 2 that's normal setting and then shunts 2 and 3 will clear the CMOS. So in this case we can't just reset the password we have to clear the CMOS so this will remove all CMOS information including the supervisor and user password. Right now this CMOS jumper 16 is closing shunts number 1 and 2. We need to move the jumper over to shunt number 2 and 3 to be able to reset it. Generally you just move the shunt for a second or two. That will clear the CMOS. So now all of the settings will be removed. And then you move the jumper back. Put it to the normal setting. So now we will be able to boot the machine, but all of our CMOS settings will have been removed. Sometimes computers don't have CMOS reset jumpers, so you may have to remove the CMOS battery. I'll show you how to do that. This one happens to have a little plastic shroud and a little metal tab. Here's a little plastic toothpick to press that metal tab back, and then that lifts up the CMOS battery. 
So with the CMOS battery removed, all of the save settings that were in CMOS are no longer there. Leave it out for 5 or 10 seconds and then carefully put the battery back in. So that's another way to reset the CMOS settings. Now I boot the machine that we just reset the CMOS settings on. As it boots up, it will detect any new devices. So in this case, it'll detect the hard drive, CD-ROMs, floppy device, go through the memory test. And then it will stop and give us an error message saying that CMOS checksum error, the defaults were loaded. That means that, hey, I couldn't find any of the previous information. I loaded what the defaults were. So in this case, we're going to have to reset everything, system time, boot order, any of those custom settings that were originally saved in there. When we move that jumper and or remove that battery, we reset all those settings. So I'll press the delete key, we'll enter setup, and then we can set some of those settings. The first settings you need to set is the system time. So under the standard CMOS features, our system time, as you can see, it went back to January 1st, 2002. So we'll set, change that setting, set it to the right day. the right year, and we'll set the system time. It automatically detected our hard drive and CD-ROM, so we don't need to save it or change any of those settings. And then we could go through and set any of these settings again. I'll just leave them as the default, and then I won't set a supervisor or user password. So once I've saved my settings, on the restart this time we shouldn't get a CMOS error because we set the system time. That's one of the main things that the BIOS and CMOS look for is the system time set to the default. If it's not, if it's a setting other than that and it has some settings saved, this time we don't get a CMOS error and then it starts booting into our operating system. In this video I showed you some of the different BIOS chips we also took a look at some different CMOS setup utilities. And then I showed you the reset jumper and also removing a CMOS battery to reset all your CMOS settings. You should practice opening up computers, taking a look at the different types of BIOS chips and CMOS reset utilities, and then also practice navigating the different CMOS setup utilities that are out there. Good luck and thanks for watching.